Well, Deb Murphy filed this story for Sierra Wave Media. The panel discussion on Measure Z that was held last Thursday at the Mammoth Lakes Art Center was civil, well attended, and whittled the hotly debated issue of short-term rentals in Mammoth's residential neighborhoods down to its bare bones. The no on Measure Z folks want to try a limited pilot program allowing transient rentals in areas where the practice is currently not allowed by zoning ordinances. The yes on Measure Z side wants to see what the program looks like and have the chance to vote on it. How come that hasn't been rolled out by now for the voters to take a look at and say like, hey, you know, if I vote no, this is what I'm going to get. How come it's been so vague? In point of fact, previous town councils, the same town councils that brought us the $43 million deficit that we have now, talked about this and then kicked the can down the road. They never actually did anything. This present town council has started on a program of dealing with this issue. They may not have dealt with it as fast enough for the Measure Z people or some other people in town, I don't know, but they started to move on the thing. They recognized it's a very difficult issue. They weren't gonna pass something overnight, but they were working at passing an ordinance, a procedure that would be proper for Mammoth. It would be small to begin with. They, they'd see all the problems you're talking about, and they'd work it out so it made sense with input from people who were against nightly rentals, people who were for it. But the bottom line is, not a single council person has said, I want nightly rentals in the nobles. I want nightly rentals in the trails. That has never happened, and it's not gonna. So okay, can, we, so we, we, and, question, okay back to question, Kathy, go. My, my question to Paul is, I get what you're saying. I understand it, it's a, uh, an idea in progress. They don't have a specific plan. Why are they afraid to put that to a vote of people? Why? I don't know why. If it's such a great program, why wouldn't we support it? And if we don't, wouldn't they learn something about what's not good about that program? That's all we're saying. There, there's no prohibition from the council proposing the exact kind of program that you're like characterizing there. We don't have it yet. They haven't done it yet. But getting back to your other issue, like why didn't we wait to see what they had and then react? Because the time frames are bad. We only have 30 days to react. We looked into this a lot. And we just couldn't visualize ourselves putting together a response within 30 days. Measure Z, represented by realtor Kathy Cage and retired Forest Service employee Sandy Hogan, would put any change in zoning allowed short-term rentals in residential neighborhoods up to a vote. Paul Rudder, a retired lawyer and real estate developer representing the no on Measure Z side, along with 10-year Mammoth resident and freelance journalist David Page, thinks the measure would not be function but would be expensive. What Measure Z would do, it would basically freeze our present zoning in concrete. And when I say that, what I mean is to change the zoning, first you'd have to have an affirmative vote of the town council, and then it would have to be subjected to a vote of the, of the public, which sounds relatively simple and straightforward. This vote that Measure Z is going to create will cost $50,000. $50,000 is more money than the town has right now. Uh, the town is in very difficult economic times. Um, it can't pay $50,000 without taking it from somewhere else. Now those expecting a testy battle were disappointed with the panelists as the only sharp remarks came from moderators Ted Carlton of The Sheet and realtor appraiser Matthew Lehman. The opponents of Measure Z point to the potential of bolstering the town's coffers with increased transient occupancy taxes. Yes on Measure Z strongly suggests the city, the town of Mammoth Lakes, go after illegal rentals, channeling home rentals away from zones that prohibit and into the resort zones. But the enforcement is not as easy as it sounds, according to Mammoth Town Manager Dan Holler. So the whole process we follow through. Uh, it's not a matter of a challenge comes in at some time. It's well, come arrest these people who are illegally renting. But the problem there is the homeowner doing it, not the people in the home. So you're balancing that act as well. So you go after the homeowner versus the people who are in the home. The one light at the end of the enforcement tunnel is legislative efforts directed at internet booking sites. 
Unintended consequences played a minor role in the forum, sponsored by a neutral Mammoth Lakes Board of Realtors. Among those what ifs were impacts on traditional lodging and escalated housing costs running the community's workforce out of town. Councils change every two years. And so, well, Paul says he you know, doesn't speak to this one. He does a lot of times. But um, the fact is you can't speak for the future what's going to happen. Um, I don't, if, if you have little proposals to chip away, that's not good planning. We have planning for a reason. Because in one good thing, one reason we have this residential that has never changed in all these years, it's because it works for us. And we have a resort zone. Let it work for us. All right, 30 seconds, I'll, 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 I'll answer your question. I, I don't want to vote every time there's a change to the zoning or a, a proposed change to the zoning. I don't even understand what that is. <laughs> so uh, that's why I, I elected officials to deal with that for me. I know we have a planning commission. I trust those people. And absolutely, if they made a horrible decision and somebody showed it to me and I could understand it, I'd say, hey, let's have a referendum. I think that's a terrible way to go. But in the meantime, I elected them. I hope they're going to do that for me. Also, the Mammoth Lakes Chamber of Commerce will host another Measure Z forum. Now, this one's coming up this Tuesday, September 29th, 5 to 7 p.m. That'll be at the Forest Service Auditorium next to the Mammoth Lakes Welcome Center. A press release says this is an unbiased forum meant to provide one more opportunity for interested citizens to educate themselves on both sides of the issue before casting their votes during the special election on October 6th and contact the Mammoth Chamber for more information. Well, the Bishop Unified School District, in partnership with the Bishop Police Department, will be holding an informational event designed to raise drug awareness among the parents of our community. That is set for Tuesday, September 29th, 6 p.m. at the Bishop Union High School Dorothy Joseph Auditorium and will feature local law enforcement officers and narcotics experts. The audience for this event, according to a press release, anyone in the community who has school-aged children. Included in the discussion will be what drugs your children will be exposed to, what signs to look for that indicate drug use, how to talk to kids about drugs, and the rule of five, which recommends that parents start discussing drugs with their children a full five years before the children are typically even exposed to them. Now, this is an adults-only event, but there will be child care available in classroom for those parents who cannot provide their own. If you would like more information on this event, again, coming up on Tuesday, 6 p.m. at Bishop Union High School, you can contact the main office at any of the Bishop schools. Well, Disabled Sports Eastern Sierra took a group of handicapped athletes from Los Angeles out to Horseshoe Lake to experience rock climbing. Now, while there, Kathy Copeland was interviewed by the television series Hometown Heroes for all of her work in Mammoth Lakes. Sierra Web Media's Rob Gill filed this piece. We are out at Horseshoe Slabs, and, which is behind Horseshoe Lake, and we are taking a group of 10 athletes from Rancho Los Amigos Rehab Center rock climbing. Uh, they wanted to come up for three days of activities. Uh, one was cycling, one was rock climbing on real rock, and the other is paddling. And uh, as you can see by being out here, we told them the biggest challenge for rock climbing on real rock is the access to the climb. So they were all game. They slept over half a mile over roots and rocks and bridges and dips and hills. And uh, here we are. Everybody climbed. Everyone had a great time. And they're going to charge on out shortly. Well, yeah, this is my first time. And this is my second day here. So uh, my experience is like, new founding you know um, I never thought it would be something like this you know it's so great and just fun it's just wonderful <laughs> it was incredible they um, were all game it, it was really exciting we worked them really hard yesterday cycling um, and they all came well rested and ready to go and every single person climbed one way or another they all got up on rock and they had a great great time and I think Everyone's coming back for more. We're working on talking them to come up uh, on their own this winter to ski with us. We're very fortunate to have Neil and his crew from Sierra Mountain Guides leading us on these ventures. They're very, very experienced. They've been doing this for years on their own with able-bodied athletes. And they come help us with our military sports program every year. And uh, with their help, we get everybody up. We um, do hands-on assists. We encourage people to be as independent as possible first. Um, if they don't have use of their legs, we can put them in a sling or they can pull themselves up with their arms. 
Um, we just need to protect them from banging up against the rocks. Um, if that's too much, we can help them pull themselves up, climbing just with their arms. Or as you saw um, later for the people who well, either had climbed enough and they were tired or were unable to pull themselves up, we can help pull them up on a high line, which is like a zip line or a Tyrolean traverse. And we can pull them up the rock, they can hang out um, as long as they want, and then they can ease down with their belayer. That feels good up here. Yeah. Yeah. Let's stretch good out your back you. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Good, good therapy. Guy. Good. Come to me, Colton. Come to me. <laughs> run in, run in. <laughs> well, it gives you a chance to, you know, see what you can do with your own physical ability, being challenged by, you know, my disability. So I just went for everything I can go for, you know. filming Kathy Copeland as a hometown hero. So they came up to talk to her about all the work she's doing um, with Disabled Sports Eastern Sierra, including the development of the National Wounded Warrior Center. Well, we plan to officially launch the capital campaign uh, sometime in January. We have gently started it. We've already raised over $2 million. Um, we have the land secure and we're very excited. We have architectural rendering and it's gonna be an incredible place for our military athletes to come learn, heal, and thrive. Oh, they are great. They are super outstanding. You know, they have big heart and they're just totally into what they're doing and they're really good at what they do. If you want to get involved with Disabled Sports Eastern Sierra and the National Wounded Warriors Center, you can call our office at 760-934-0791. You can find us on our website at disabledsportseasternsierra.org or Wounded Warriors Mammoth org or you can email us at info at disabled sports eastern sierra dot org and we'd love to hear from you donations are welcome volunteers are welcome come come visit us all right some great stuff there thank you and we'll be back with a weather report